This is a patient who's very large in fear mesenteric artery, uh, who would required uh, treatment with an endograph because of a large uh, right common iliac uh, artery aneurysm. Um, he refused open surgery. Uh, we had prior to this uh, checked as both celiac and severe mesenteric artery by uh, CT scan showed that both were open as were his internal iliac arteries. Because of the size of this and we thought that uh, there's a rare occasion where preemptive embolization may be necessary. Here we can see the six French aptus sheath from Medtronic has been reformed inside uh, the aneurysm sac. The green lines represent CT fusion. We fused the pre-op CT scan using biplanar image fusion. Um, the red circle, which looks like a line here, is the origin of the inferior mesenteric artery and the uh, green line represents the trajectory of the inferior mesenteric artery. This is all based upon fusion. Um, in our experience this is very accurate. Here we can see that we have a uh, glide wire, uh, there's a burn a catheter inside the aptus sheath. Uh, I think it's now called the tour guide sheath and now you can actually see the wire is being delivered down the um, lumen of the inferior mesenteric artery. You can see the trajectory of it. So the obvious value in this is that uh, you know immediately that you've catheterized uh, the right vessel. Here you'll see it deviates down into one of the side branches, uh, likely one of the sigmoid colon branches. Once we get the wire in place, we advanced uh, the uh, burn catheter uh, through the uh, tour guide uh, into the uh, stem of the inferior mesenteric artery. The thing that's going to be most important are where's the origin. Clearly we have that marked. The second part is where is the first branch point um, that is occurring. So right now the uh, burn has been advanced, it's back in the tour guide up a little bit, so you're obviously watching to make sure that the uh, guide catheter doesn't flick up the aorta. Although the tour guide, uh, by virtue of its ability to shape this, um, it gives quite a bit of support. And by rotating the burn catheter, you'll see it kind of pops through the origin um, into the stem. There you go, into the inferior mesenteric artery. So it's a pretty stable position. As soon as the burn went through, you can see the tour guide comes back and it's positioned perfectly at the origin of the inferior mesenteric artery. Now we're going to remove the uh, guide wire and we're going to go ahead and shoot an arteriogram. And here you can see arteriogram. We're in the stem of the origin, the inferior mesenteric artery. Um, we also tried to optimize the correct angle for the takeoff of the first branch. Uh, because we put a coil in there, we clearly don't want to encroach upon the left colic branch. Indeed, that may be an important collateral pathway via the meandering artery down into the uh, sigmoid cone. So at this point in time, uh, whenever you see these lines moving, it's because we're reorienting the image intensifier, and this is so that we get the best angle uh, to correctly define where the takeoff of the left colic branch actually is. So here you can see we're now injecting it. We've got a nice uh, origin of the takeoff here. So at that point in time, we thought there was uh, enough of a stem of the IMA that we could actually place uh, an embolization coil. And uh, what we opted to do is take a six millimeter uh, intracoil. It's from Boston Scientific. It's a detachable O35 coil, which we can deliver through the um, uh, the burn catheter. I'll we'll just move this forward just a little bit, and you'll see we went back to the, we chose to go back to the original orientation. We reshot it just so we knew exactly where that takeoff was, um, and the plan was we really didn't need to even go close to that uh, to that branch. And so what's going to happen now is we are actually measuring the diameters. We chose a six millimeter coil, and then we're going to bring that coil up. You'll see it coming up through the burn catheter. And the important thing when you put in a coil in is you really want to see it start to uh, to actually coil. We'll run this thing forward a little bit and you can see the coils starting to come out. Um, now again, we when we're doing this, we've got two screens. One that does not show that overlay. You can clearly see the uh, coil coming out. We know where the first branch is. And you always feel comfortable once the coil uh, actually forms. And you can see it's nicely forming and packing into the um, origin of the inferior mesenteric artery, rather the stem of the inferior mesenteric artery. And this was a, I believe it was a 14 centimeter long coil packing into the IMA.
who are anticoagulate at this point in time. And you also want to make sure that the coil is detached. Um, there's a, the inner lock is, is so named really because there, there's uh, the cat the pusher is actually locked onto the the wire. But and when you start withdrawing it, you got to make sure that you don't uh, pull that coil back out. And we're showing the center line. We're showing the origin of the um, sigmoid colon branch. So at that point in time, we opted to go ahead and just do an arteriogram and determine whether any additional calls were going to be required and you can see we'll let it run right there you can see this is already occluded that inferior mesenteric artery so again the ground rules are it's the last coil that you put in that usually gets away and gets in trouble we really uh, not got a lot of working room back to the origin i felt that since it was already occluded we'd go ahead and uh, take that and disengage the burn again making sure that it's not grabbing the coil as you do that I reform the aptus sheath back in the straight line uh, before I actually withdraw that. And that was successful. Embolization in femurs and tricardia. We don't do that very often. Uh, just seemed to, uh, that this was the situation we would do it in. Thanks very much.